this um, preach I'm doing tonight is probably probably of of all the ones I've done. I think it's probably relates. Um, it's obviously been playing on my mind over the last couple of weeks, and I think it's probably relevant in my life and also to share to the audience. So today's title is Conversations with God. So the, the theme is basically ourselves and God and how we have a, a conversation with him. So I'm going to start off with the whole conversation is basically prayer. And what I want to kind of cover firstly with, if you think of the word pray, what is this? So it's basically an expression of thanks to God. It's a service where people pray and come together. And it's also a hope and a wish. So the first thing I've mentioned there with the expression of thanks to God, if you think of the Christian life, Jesus died for you and he paid a, a price for your sins. But if we also think of the word pray, and this is probably applicable to all churches. So sometimes we have a, a prayerful church. We pray for our community. We pray for our family. And for me, and this is probably, I'm, I'm learning this as well, it's the most vital component in the Christian life. So what I've been reading probably over the last six months in terms of trying to grasp the Bible and it's probably becoming more relevant in Jesus's life when he was on earth. It's very interesting that he was probably not necessarily a shy person. He was very bold, but at certain points he would disappear off to be talked to his father. And through the whole Bible, it was always to do with the mission as if to say, I'm doing my father's business. This is what I need to do. And it's also does also apply for having a prayerful life. We need to take time out of our busy schedules. And Jesus did that as well. It's very interesting. Sometimes in biblical passages, he would take time away and talk to the father because obviously his main mission was to do the father's business. And also because obviously it was the relationship of the son to the father. So the next two questions, and this is, I'm just going to throw these questions out. Um, this can also be your homework. I'm, I'm almost being like a teacher now. Um, so if you think of, of, of the word pray, what does this mean to you? And a prayer meeting, what does this mean to you? So the interesting, actually, a lot of people think of a prayer meeting as very boring. It's not very exciting. But it's if we turn that around, if you have a prayerful church, You've got a church that's going somewhere. It's grounded in prayer. And from that, it's almost taking it up a notch. So as a good example, in this church, on a Friday, we have fervent prayer. So for those who don't know about it, it's worth going to. And what we've actually seen um, is a lot of prayers being answered. I've also joined another um, men's group. And it's interesting. It's a... It's a um, it's a men's prayer group. And the first thing actually I turned up at this church, and this also does apply to this church, is prayers get answered. So we're rooting everything in prayer. We're asking God for, for things. And it's that whole thing is you're committing, obviously, uh, what you want, obviously, and over to God to deal with it. So the first scripture we have, obviously, is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God and Christ in you. So it's very much prayer, as we're going to cover in a few more slides coming up, is very much giving thanks and rejoicing because obviously you've made that commitment to Christ. So then we kind of jump to the word pray. So obviously we're going to cover some acronyms tonight. And obviously with prayer as well, it's, two, it's a two-way communication. As a human being, we're talking to God, we're talking to and we're listening to. So this is probably quite relevant and I will share something per personally for me. So I had been for a prophetic checkup and because I'm a list person, it's probably just how my brain is wired because I'm very analytical and I like to list, list, list as one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And I remember I turned up to this prophetic checkup and what this woman said to me, and it was actually probably very apt. She said, on a Sunday, I want you to take time out with God and just rest. And instead of asking what you want, be silent and saying, God, I want you to, you know, come into the situation, 
and then speak to me. So that's the thing. It was very interesting. And I think this is, follows on from the words prayer. So obviously pray stands for, P stands for praise, R is repent, A is ask, and Y is yield. So particularly, obviously, this applies to my own life, and this also applies to a lot of Christians' lives. The first thing you should always do in a prayer is to praise. So it's basically thanking God, you've come into my life, you know, I'm a sinner, and obviously now you, you've basically changed my life from old to new, where most people, and myself included, will come in and say, I want this, 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 rather than at the start of the prayer is to praise. So it's basically thanking God for being in your life. So in praise, and there's a few things to think, of, not only of giving thanks, we have to think in, in prayer and praise. He's the creator of the world. He's the creator of the universe. He's a faithful God, and he's worthy of all honor and praise. And there, there is also other godly attributes as well. So we've got Ephesians 3 verse 20, and it's basically obviously offering that over in terms of praise. The next one is repentance. So this is a thing, again, from my own experience, you have to obviously daily repent. It's a daily fight with the flesh, but it's that whole prayerful mindset that you've got to come in with. So in terms of repentance, it's confessing sins, helping to see the unseen, because obviously God is, we can't see him, but he's omnipresent. It's also understanding his word through reading scripture, humbling ourselves, and basically we are seen as small, but God is seen as big, and God's work is on your heart. So it's a repentance before him. And then the next is asking, and this is again, probably applicable for me having my list of prayer requests and also praise reports as well. So it's meeting our needs, casting cares on Jesus, looking after our spiritual and physical well-being, sharing the good news of Jesus with others. And then from that is what do you want to see God change in your life and also in the life of others? So that's where obviously we have obviously the asking. And then lastly, it's on why is yielding. So it's that whole kind of submission. It's the surrender to God. It's asking uh, for his will in your life, not yours, not yours. And it's following the example of Jesus to God. So, and then obviously sensing God's yielding to his perfect will. will. So if you think particularly, this is when I was doing some research, when Jesus was on earth, obviously doing his father's business, he always wanted to consider the image of his father. And it's the same obviously being a Christian, or if you are new to Christianity, is that whole well, you want to be Christ-like in everything. So you're always, in this case, praying, discussing with God to say, what do you want me to do rather than what do I need to do? So again, I'm jumping just to the bottom here. It's prayer and sequence in Psalm 145, verse 3 to 4. We praise you for being a faithful God who will never leave us. So as mentioned, one of the things there, it's the unseen. Obviously, we can't physically see him until, obviously, you know, he comes back. But again, he is omnipresent. So it's an all-consuming God. So the thing is very much, obviously, today's sermon is all about connection. So it's that conversation with God. So it's interesting through the course of the day is to commune with God. So it's not necessarily having a quiet time in the morning or the evening, but it's almost like God's with you the whole day. I mean, I um, personally have to find every day, obviously, before I go off to work. It's almost like, God, will you come with me? and deal with these situations and conversations with people and obviously meetings and all that. So it's very much that whole conversation with God that it's almost like, you know, you've got the time in the morning of the son to the father and you're asking God to come into every day. And obviously, basically, it's almost like having your armor on as well and giving you that protection to deal with situations and circumstances. So the next thing um, I dropped in here is a film. Obviously, we wouldn't be watching the film tonight, but the film is called Letters to God. And it's an interesting film. Obviously, it's a Christian film. And it's to do with the, the reason why I'm mentioning this, because it's kind of 
coming in with connection and it's a very powerful witness in the film. So this um, child, I think they're under 10 years old and they're struggling with cancer. And what they actually do, they actually start sending letters to, to the post office or the Royal Mail and it's just addressed as God. And then what eventually happens is there's someone, the postman at the postal service is storing all these letters and then wondering where can they go? But through that, it's a complete witness. So then it's almost like a complete witness of the situation of this person's going through. Obviously, the, the film's obviously very interesting, but it's obviously focusing on someone having that conversation, not necessarily by praying, but also writing down. So in the connection as well, we also need to consider what we need to do is to write. So obviously we've had the biblical, uh, the Bible is written as a biblical evidence of what's happened, but we also need to talk with God. We need to journal. So it's very much looking at where have I come from? Where am I, where am I now? And where am I going to go to? And then we've also got discussion as we've seen obviously individual discussions, conversations with ourselves and God also discussions with like-minded people as well, like-minded Christians, and then also group discussions. So again, as, as I covered before, we've got the prayer meeting on a Friday night, is a group discussion, it's a connection with God. So it's very much focusing on um, Jesus obviously giving us that strong faith and courage, and obviously it's, it's almost that letter to God. So also interesting as being a human being, there's two things I just wanted to drop in here. So the last one, the last point I may also then could be very focus into another sermon. But obviously the, the first one, obviously, it's very interesting that God always gives you five senses. So you've got vision, hearing, smell, taste and touch. And it's also very interesting how it must be a God centric thing. If you were to lose one of your senses, sometimes as a human being, the other sense or senses counteract for that so you may get an extra bonus of another sense to counteract a, a missing sense if that makes sense and the other thing with connections which a lot of people don't know is the five fingers so I'll just explain what the five fingers are so the thumb in terms of praying is basically your thumb is close to you but it's also praying for your family and friends your pointer finger is praying for those who point you in the right direction. And this is a, a, applying a, a particularly to teachers, leaders, and those giving you wisdom, and also then giving you wisdom and support. You've also got your middle finger, which is praying for those in government, business, and church. Again, giving you guidance and wisdom. And then you've got your ring finger, which is praying for those who are poor, sick, in pain or tr trouble. And then your pinky finger is praying for ourselves and our own needs. So interesting, as I've covered with the word pray, so praise, repent, ask and yield, ourselves are focusing towards the end, but all the other things are more important. So again, it's other people, the church and God is seen as the priority first and then the other thing uh, we're becoming obviously the first will be last and the last will be first as it says obviously in in the bible so again back on connection it's very much talking to god it's living a prayerful life so basically we need to consider of the power of heaven down on earth so it's our our, our needs for our our daily needs obviously coming from god so this is where it's always vital to have that quiet time in the morning or even the evening, depends when you do it. Different people do it at different day, different times and different days. But it's having that kind of time that you talk with, with the Father. God is all powerful. So, so I was looking at that obviously he can do all things. All things are possible. So Luke 1 verse 37 is getting on your knees with God is the most sufficient prayer. So this is what I've heard from a lot of sermons Sometimes when you're going through a lot of issues in life, sometimes that's almost the best solution is you get on your knees in prayer and you ask God to help you and solve a situation. And of God, also God asks us to pray, to talk to him, have faith, be persistent and thankful. So you've got obviously Luke 18 verse 1 and Hebrews 4 verse 16. And then answering our prayers, 
is calling on him to answer. So Psalm 17, verse 6, it's filled with the peace and the strength in him. So we're now back to some kind of acronyms, and obviously these are also very applicable. So the first one, they're all really connected with prayer, but the first one I think is very useful in how you pray, because uh, joy actually stands for Jesus, others, and yourself. So it's very interesting in praying, as I've covered earlier on, naturally you'd pray for yourself first, others, and then Jesus, but it really should be Jesus first to thank others, others' needs before your own, and then yourself. And then obviously we've had the PRAY acronym, which we covered earlier on, which was praise, repent, ask, and yield. You've got PUSH, which is pray until something happens. <laughs> I always think of that scenario of a door pushing, to push a door, push a door open into the next opportunity. And then this one is probably an older acronym as WWJD is what would Jesus do? So with the last one there, I, I've ha actually, I do have two armbands and it's very interesting. Sometimes it, I'm reminded if I do wear it, then it's almost like is Jesus standing right beside me? What would he do in that situation? And then from that learning how to basically interact, how Jesus would cope in that situation. So it's very much that whole connection piece. It's the son to the father. And it almost sounds, um, there is obviously a Mary Mary song called Super Friend, which is basically the same thing as your best friend. So it's that whole daily conversation throughout each day and, and asking obviously the father to come with you in all situations when obviously you're out and about in certain situations and also asking obviously for protection. So obviously interesting today, and I will just briefly mention, so I was in the gym today and there is a sports brand called Under Armour. And I thought that was just so apt because every day we do need to put our armour on for protection. And obviously I have covered that obviously in another sermon. Um, so the, the next one really is kind of just daily prayer. So it's very much taking proper time with God. Interesting, actually, if you are a new believer or new to Christ, what they normally say is you first maybe take a couple of minutes in the morning and then probably what you find, and this is probably what applied to Jesus when he was on earth, he spent more time with the Father. So, and I think particularly it's very interesting if you're new to Christian life, as you only maybe take a couple of minutes first and then the time becomes so precious, you want to spend more time with, with God for asking for more things. So there is obviously, I think there is a website called Time with God and it, it's linked with coffee and tea. And what that's basically meaning is you, you grab a brew and then after that you're sitting down reading obviously scripture, journaling, and then obviously taking note. And then obviously it's looking at where you are now and where you need to go. So it's basically grabbing a brew, a book, not a mobile phone and listing down and praying. The reason why I'm saying not to use a mobile phone, this did apply to me in the last probably week in the company car park. I was about to go into work and I obviously try and pray. I do obviously pray before going into work and the, my mobile phone can get a connection. So the first thing I thought, right, OK, I'll bring a Bible into the car. So I've got the physical book. And it's interesting, actually, you, I find uh, if a book is open, you're more likely to read it than if it's closed but I think sometimes it's good to have the physical book form than obviously a mobile phone because it's always a backup scenario if you can't get a signal. So as with pray um, it's very much waiting first and being silent so as obviously with the sermon it's very much rooting in prayer but it's also as well before reading scripture it's always very good to pray first to say what you going what am I going to learn from this what you spit out, what you're going to tell me in this situation, and then obviously then kind of taking stock of of a of um a passage of scripture, writing down some notes, and then also then obviously being silent. So obviously again with the pray scenario, it's obviously thanking God for reading the scripture, and then also maybe asking God to speak to you through that scripture. So it's very much having a clear mind. And this is also sometimes difficult with busy lives is obviously trying to clear your mind out and obviously having that time with you, with the father. And again, it's obviously asking for the Holy Spirit, for the, the guidance and scripture. The other thing I wanted to mention as well, just we're jumping to the next one, is the Concordance Bible. 
So you will also find some Bibles at the front are very interesting because they cover certain topics, normally from A to, A to Z. So it could be such things as weakness, anger, salvation, in need, family, or worship. And some Bibles do have at the front, they have certain scriptures to point you to, which is always very good to have if you're looking for basically how to deal with life issues. So again, that whole prayer influence is praying Jesus, others, and yourself in the sequence. So again, it's very much thanking, for example, you've got out of bed in the morning, that you're still healthy, you can read the word, and also you can pray for others then after that yourself. So with conversations with God, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. It can also be a one-to-many relationship, and it can also be a many-to-many -many relationships. So your one-to-one -one is obviously your daily um, quiet time. Your one-to-many could be you're praying for your family, you're praying for nations, you're praying for countries, you could be praying for people at work. And your many-to-many -many is normally then would be in your church meetings, and again, you're also then playing for your local, national and global communities. So this whole conversation piece is the son to the father. It's the child to the parent. So if you think of a child looking to the parent, the, pa the child will normally copy the parent's attributes in terms of their skills and behavior. And interesting, obviously, when Jesus was on earth, he always wanted to mimic the father's behavior. He was always asking for advice and guidance. And again, it's all to do with the prayer. The other thing with health benefits, so this is a new thing I've learned as well, that prayer does actually give health benefits. One of the things it's, well, the few things it gives you, obviously you have time to medicate, meditate due to obviously having a busy life. You can take time out, worship God and, and be with God. But also with prayer as well, it can give you that peacefulness. It can give you a reboost. And basically, it takes the mind off ourselves and onto God, which is obviously is the creator of the universe. So it's that whole solitude that's the time with God. And I think with the day-to-day -day feelings of prayer, it's basically making a commitment. You're taking time out of your busy day to worship God, but it's also a recommitment. So it's that whole indirectly as human beings, we fight with flesh on a day-to-day -day basis but you're recommitting your life day to day, obviously, and obviously you want to follow Christ. So the door of opportunity into to God's word is the other thing. So the first thing actually I, I was considering doing, and I probably eventually is on my to-do list, is to write a book on prayer. So obviously that it's, I've been looking actually in the market for, for prayer as books, and I will give a, a book link at the end. But I think it's um, there needs to be, or I find there's a gap in the market to have maybe a small book and prayer of what it's all about in terms of as covering to that tonight is this whole, it's a conversation with God. So obviously there is another prayer book which I've located, which covers the sacraments. Obviously we do talk about the communion, we, uh, the bread and the wine, and that obviously is covered in prayer because in biblical times they would use sacraments obviously to to thank God for certain situations. You've also got prayer as well as to protect food. So again, they say grace. And it's interesting actually, sometimes I have heard of situations where people have not said grace and they've got ill. So obviously God will protect you obviously when you're eating food before, but obviously you need to pray obviously before eating. You've got praying for others. You've got praying for the world, you've got praying for yourself and praying to believe. So again, with doors of opportunity. So again, as, as I was trying to find the scripture here, you're praying for things um, you've not necessarily seen. So again, you've not necessarily seen the Father, but the Father is all around and omnipresent. I will just share another opportunity as well, and it's, it applies to, because obviously God gives me a lot of images in the gym, and um, I will just share in terms of the door of opportunity. So there was, um, over the last week, there's a fire exit symbol. And on the left-hand side, it's got a running man. And then there's an arrow pointing down. And there's a door to the right. So it's a, a picture of three. And I feel with the door of opportunities, it's that God's always saying, well, you have your open door. You have your door of opportunities in terms of prayer. 
But before you do that, you need to pray first. So the arrow's pointing down as if to say, you need to surrender yourself, put yourself on your knees and obviously worship God. And then that door is going to open for a door of opportunity. So lastly, it's the whole da daily conversation with the father. It's that whole relationship throughout the whole day as your best friend. Obviously, you can come to him at any time and obviously you can speak to him. There is also a management terminology, which I thought was very relevant for prayer, is RAG, which basically stands for red, amber and green. So if you think of a traffic light, red in this case in terms of prayer requests would be no, it's not available now. Amber is waiting and green is to go. So it's all to do with God's timing. So this is another thing with prayer. Obviously, God will not necessarily give you everything you want at this point in time, but sometimes it's a waiting scenario until the timing is right. So what we've seen obviously a lot of times in the Bible, people are praying and asking for things, but it is in God's timing and a lot. And as we see, it's the right time for things to happen. It's a lot of fruitful and faithful time. So it's having a right heart, it's praying right, it's praying with conviction, and obviously if prayer is mentioned a lot of times in the Bible, so depending on the version, it's anything from 300 to 600 times. And again, it's a lot to do with Jesus spending time with the Father and obviously going away from the crowds to commune with the Father to ask again for advice and guidance. So it's, um, it's very much this whole door of opportunity is praying during the day and talking to the Father. So obviously you are in God's family and obviously you are a child of God. So it's the child to the parent scenario. The other thing as well, that God can also open up doors of opportunity yeah. on a daily basis with people. So in situations, God might turn situations around. Or it could be also as well that he might give you the chance to evangelize or witness. So lastly, um, I just wanted to cover um, just a, a book and a song. So there is an old, I think it's a hymn. Um, it's called Take It to the Lord in Prayer. And it's a very interesting. And I've pulled out four lines here, which I thought was actually very apt so it's basically have we trials and temptation is there trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the lord in prayer so it's asking god for situations to be resolved uh, and can be a friend so faithful with our sorrows to share jesus knows our every weakness take it to the lord in prayer so obviously there is obviously more uh, passages in that song but it's a very sound song that's talking about prayer the other book link that I would recommend. This is probably one of the very first books that's actually come about about prayer. It's Don't Just Stand There, Pray Something by Ronald Dunn. Um, it's a kind of older book. It's probably one of the first books that came about because obviously um, now there's, there's more books about prayer, but this one's probably very good because as with prayer, we not only just pray for ourselves and our own needs, but we've got our own family and friends, and then also your local, global and national communities. So it gives you obviously things to pray for if you are stuck. Um, and then just kind of really to kind of to sum up really on today's sermon is obviously the answer is in prayer. Prayer changes families, communities, countries and the world. So as I mentioned probably at the very start, a powerful, prayerful church is going to be a changing church which can change the world. And then just lastly, to kind of cover your new life has come, your old life has passed. So if you want to have a healthy, fulfilled life, have a prayerful life. That's me.